Hello everyone, it's Oliver Harper here and I'm back with a new commentary and today Stuart Ashton is joining me to discuss Masters of the Universe. How are you doing Stuart? I'm not bad, we're about to watch Masters of the Universe so I'm happy. <laughs> Now, folks, if you wish to sync the commentary with your own copy of He-Man, put the timestamp to zero and press play now. Ah, oh, Canon, simple. your guarantee of quality. Oh, yes. I miss this logo so much. It's my favourite logo. Now, me and Stuart were sort of discussing this beforehand, and Stuart's a couple of years older than me, but you were also fully aware of this movie when it came out. Oh, yes. My goodness, weren't we ever. And we hated it. <laughs> like, properly, just no interest in it whatsoever. Because it feels nothing like He-Man, even from the promotional material. It's all dark, instead of all the, um, you know, sort of pastely bright hues of the He-Man stuff. It's all set on Earth and look cheap. Even at 11 years old, we realise that. Um, oh, hang on. Castle Grayskull, everyone. It looks like an oil rig, but it's Castle Grayskull. <laughs> One-eyed Willie's kind of uh, oh God. shit from Goonies. You said to me earlier they zoomed slightly in too much in this matte painting, and yeah. you're not wrong. I think it's right. I, I, I think it was kind of, I don't know, re composed into cinema scope then maybe wouldn't it be as bad but you even yeah. you don't even get to see Eternia in its full glory because it's just the camera pans up so quickly above the painting you can't actually see anything but um, you know as a kid seeing that intro I was just like this is amazing <laughs> because it was it's basically Superman isn't it um, as this theme tune is entirely telling us yes <laughs> But also you were visual effects by Richard Edlund, who did Ghostbusters and, uh, what was it, 2010, the sequel to 2001. Because uh, he set up his own company called Boss Film, did Die Hard as well. So oh my goodness, I did not know that. 65 millimeter effect shots, so when you get these weird, like, you know, it says I have the power and a beam of oh, light yeah. comes out. There's loads of it in this movie, which is like pure 65 mil. So it's, it's got a lot stuff. of 80s electricity effects, which are some of my favourites. Oh man, yeah. Well, sort of thing like with uh, Ghostbusters with the uh, proton pack beams, whatever it is, the blast has got the. Oh, great, yes, yeah. And Big Trouble Little China has the great animated lightning. Yep. Uh, effect Perfect as well. examples. Yeah. yeah. But as I was saying, it just felt at the time like the designs of the monsters aren't the ones from the co cartoon, and they're like something out of a horror film or one of those <laughs> post apocalyptic things you'd get in sort of early 80s VHS shops. That's right, you know. yeah. Or oh, Beastman's quite close, I suppose. Beastman is the, by far the closest. But is it Sauron or sort of Sarad who has the, um, the lizard one? Who has weird, like, needles in his face? I think, is that Karg? With the big white afro? Oh, God, Karg, the gremlin with the back comb. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, directed by Gary Goddard. Can we point out this is the only film he directed? Yes, because he'd done, um, like, theatre beforehand at the stage play of Conan. Yes. Um, they went on to Captain Power pretty much after this. Skeleton Warriors um, was one of his, possibly yep. inspired by old Skeletor here. Yeah, Who knows? yeah, and he did... Um, How... He, Produced a lot of amusement rides like T2 and Spider Man. Oh, um, yes. Um, but obviously, now, due to re recent allegations, uh, similar allegations to the Brian Singer director. Who he was friends with, I believe. Yeah, yes. So, um, yeah, we shall not speak of him again. Yeah, <laughs> my goodness. Uh, um, yeah. But how badly does this opening scene want to be Star Wars? It really <laughs> I mean, does, doesn't the it? The music, the way it's put together, the stormtroopers. I mean, this, this whole set was literally two um, sound stages linked together. So one section, they'd literally between one to the other, they'd build the wall so you could ah. walk through two. It's a ginormous set, which is a kind of extended with a mat for the top and bottom where you see below. Because at the end, the end battle, which we'll, I'll get to when we get to it later on, which they had to hastily shoot, He-Man and Skeletor were supposed to fight on the different tiers. Yes, of the yeah, form. but they ran uh, out of money famously, didn't they? And Yeah, yeah. it was a shame. See, the one thing we did like was the Skeletor get-up. I know it's not particularly true to the cartoon, but it's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Frank Nigello really can make, made the role his own, and he steals the film. Yeah, absolutely. He knows that he needs to be the big, over-the-top villain chewing the scenery, and he does it well. That parallels, as we were saying earlier, actually, to Street Fighter, the movie, mm. where you've got the villain who understands that you really have to go all out. <laughs> Meg Foster, very good as well as Evil Lynn. She's got an incredible eyes, hasn't she? Because yeah. you see her in like, They Live as well. And um, I think she's had a small cameo in the film Leviathan. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, she plays the sort of woman who's off offshore, sort of running, runs the company and gives Peter Weller some jip. Yeah. Um, but she, yeah, she's perfect casting as, as Evil Lynn. Can um, we point out that Skeletor's wearing marigolds for his washing up later? <laughs> 
with, with Frank Langella, he he did the role because his child loved He Man, and it's the same yeah, with Raul Julia. We all did. Yes, he's kids like Street Fighter. Like Dennis Hopper and Super Mario Brothers as well. Really? Yeah. Wow, didn't know that. Yeah. One. This is. Someone has said like this was very much like episode three. George Lucas took this idea with order execute order sixty seven. Whatever yes. it is, sixty six, isn't it? Where, where it order it was? is sixty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Execute order 66. It should have been 77. So people go, that's when the film came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. <clears throat> Execute order THX 1138. <laughs> <laughs> and then he winks into the camera. <laughs> Yay, Lundgren's here. That's a, good, that's a good introduction of He-Man. Unfortunately, the next fight, which is one of oh. the last they did in the film... Um, it's super clunky, it's, it, and there's so gr- obviously angles where it's yeah. just a low, well, well, a, you know, low shot-up angle of Lundgren all waving tight, a sword. All tight shots here yeah. to hide this Vasquez rocks here because everyone's fucking seen it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of um, grunts from Dolph in this movie. A lot of, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, <it's> just <laughs> it's proper thuggish kind of noises he makes. But he's also the sweatiest hero in history. They must I, have used all the body grease in the world for this. <laughs> Oh yeah, as thus demonstrated. <laughs> yes, perfect. Yes. Uh, too much He-Man using guns. That upset us on the poster as well. Oh, well, that was uh, it. Because there's, there's alternative posters, and there's one on my wall, which is the Drew Struzan one. Yes, that's the good one. Um, but I think that's one. There's a documentary about uh, Drew Struzan and Thomas Jane. Looks through all the posters, and he goes, he gets to, he gets to He-Man, and goes, "No, that's a movie I want to see." <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Man at Arms. You I, have I, you have weird Space Marine armor. I, I quite like Man at Arms yeah. in this. He's quite humorous, and he's and the, the actor does a good job with sort of the emotional beats of it. And um, to be fair, I think humor. the actors all get it. Do you know what I mean? But, well, I don't like Mohit Lundgren because he has so little to do anyway. I don't think he really um, has a chance. And the Teela character. If somebody had given me the script, one of the first things I would have said is, "What is the purpose of this character?" Yes. Yeah. She has no will. Uh, yeah, does virtually will nothing. No, she has no agency. There. She's just there yeah. because they needed Tila as well. And she doesn't really... I think there's a slight indication that she kind of obviously fancies He-Man. It's like when he bumps into Courtney Cox and she goes, oh, it looks like you got... Yes. You know, you got, uh, but that's but pretty much all there is, isn't it? Is. Yeah. yeah. And this is Gary Goddard's kind of uh, answer for Orko. Because they yes. couldn't... You, I, you, obviously, I, as an adult, back then, you would have thought... Okay, they cannot do the Orko effect. It's impossible. But as a kid, you're like disappointed and annoyed. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Who the hell's this thing? It looks like Snarf from Thundercats. Snarf, you know? <laughs> Snarf. Hello. What's the matter, He Man? <laughs> God. Please come with me to my set. <laughs> See, this is, I like all this stuff. Because this, this also looks a little bit like Dark Crystal now. Oh. Um, with the sort of outside the world of the Skeksis. But. I also like the fact they have an establishing shot of the um, location they're going to, because that doesn't happen a lot later in the film, oh, <laughs> particularly God, no. with Greyskull, where it's, they have nothing. Yeah, that's, that's a Zack Snyder technique, isn't it? No establishing yes. shots. <laughs> yeah. We're there now. <laughs> I still don't know what Dave Pallet looks like in those movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no exterior. I never thought of that. My God. It's the sort of thing I have to do with making films, because we don't have the money. What's their excuse? You know. Good. Oh, he's super sweaty in this one, Lundgren. He's, he's major, rocking a major mm-hmm. tan. Yeah. See, I love that. That's Just a little, little, little nice bit of mechanical there. stuff. See, yeah. it's, it's good because production design is done by William Stout, who, who worked with Toby Hooper and was like, Evade, I think Evaders from Mars and uh, I think a couple of other features. And I think he may have had a odd jobs on Conan, but also conceptual designs. But he did all this with on on this movie. He took up the role of production designer. Um, does a wonderful job. If you go online, you can find some concept art of of this film, and it's incredible. What if they had the budget? What it, what they would have achieved? It would have been pretty faithful to the cartoon but also with a new lick of paint mm. um but there's you know things like the cosmic key is a wonderful design i think i think it you know it, it's a working prop um yeah but it also doesn't have the in tuning uh, forks which kind of makes sense yeah, you know yeah, yeah but also doesn't have the uh yamaha synthesizer built into it you know like a, a dx7 whatever it is you know um but I'd have to have a cosmic key you know just you playing with it all day you know, just, just that, that <laughs> noise just use it as an <clears> instrument <throat> yeah so the Gwildor there is Billy Barty, isn't he? My favourite named actor, I think, ever. Oh, Billy Barty, yeah. You call him Mr. Farty, I would. The, um, <laughs> yeah, he was in Legend um, and uh, Willow a couple of years later. Yes. Yeah, yeah all yeah. the big ones, bless him. With Gwildor, do you think he's lost a lot of weight from his face? Because there's a lot of loose skin hanging yeah, there. Yeah, it's proper saggy cheeks, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I mean, I mean, there was a toy, wasn't there, for Gwildo at the time? There, there was. three toys, I think. Yeah, there was... there was a movie He-Man. Oh, no, there was more than three, because they did a, a movie He-Man, the movie Skeletor. You had a Gwildo. There was Blade. Um... They, they didn't do the movie versions of He-Man or Skeletor. I believe they did, but they were quite rare. Really? There, I there's, think... I, there, there's some fan-made ones, but there was, mm. uh, from what I recall, and what I, my, when I reviewed this film a couple of years ago, they had a Gwildo, had a Blade, had a Sarad, and that was it. Oh, do you know, I don't remember the He-Man the Skeletor at the time, so maybe I have got confused that's what I over the years. as a kid. Yeah. I, wanted the he- I wanted the Dolph Lundgren figure. <laughs> but now they... He's got a cape, damn it. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. <laughs> but obviously now they're releasing them now. Yes, so funny. Have I've you already... got yours on order? Yes. So have I. <laughs> <laughs> I only want the Skeletor. If, if, but, I, was, um, if I was 10 yeah. years old, I'd rip them open out the packages and use them, but <laughs> now I just have to sit there in the packaging. Oh, I still dust. will. I'd never keep things in packaging. But what's the point? <sighs> yeah, but... You know, the fans would get really annoyed, wouldn't they? You like collectors. Good, you can't, you can't that'll teach them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> As a kid, I always kept all the cardboard backing of all my figures. Oh, yeah. And a whole box full of it. But oh, they so. often had cool art and stuff on. I know. I love the Ninja Turtles ones are great. And um, the Batman, the movie ones, had a, oh, had a repainted yes. superpowers figure. And everybody had Bob the Joker's goon because they were selling them off for tuppence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for tuppence, yeah. So this is Karg, isn't it? Not to be conferred, confused with Korg, which is a synthesizer. <laughs> that, this always terrified me as a yeah. kid seeing him. I mean, it is like something out of a horror film. Yeah. Like genuinely an yeah. 80s horror film. Especially the back combing, as I said earlier. But... <laughs> that shot there, that, that wide shot, the exterior, was just a, this flipped it. Because it was literally the same oh. shot earlier, but they've got, they're walking to the right and to the left. <laughs> <laughs> that saves a few quid, doesn't it? Yeah. The power sword, apparently He-Man's power sword, weighs an absolute tonne. Obviously, you've got to be Dolph's physique to carry that. Um, but Richard Edlund, the effects guy, has that sword in his... Oh. In his yeah, I think, like, I, think you're, I think he may have the cosmic key as well. So it's kind of the sword of power. and this isn't, It doesn't let him transform or anything, but equally... It's it kind of opens something in grayscale. I can't remember how I don't, it works. Yeah. Well, I think he. I don't think it does anything. I think. Well, no, that's 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 tell a lie because yeah, because Skeletor puts it in to that device yes, that's in the, the power. Throne, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the power to get to be become um, master of the universe. But when He Man gets here, he just says, "I have the power." So it obviously implies it makes him stronger. Well, Maybe a bit more confidence. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the sword's just called power. <laughs> I was a little bit confused as a kid why he, says, why he didn't say, because my girlfriend the other day when she watched it said, why doesn't he say um, by the power of Grayskull? I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't that know. would make sense in the plot as well, wouldn't it? You yeah. Know? There was this, in the early days, the late 90s of the internet when forums and IMDB kind of uh, forums as well, The uh, you can, you know, find old information about these movies or people's just nonsense they post mm. there was apparently people, someone had said oh there's an extended TV cut of He-Man the movie right and the deleted scenes had Prince Adam and he turns into He-Man I was, <laughs> everyone believed that crap and everyone was like oh my god where, where was it shown oh it was shown on a TV channel in 1989 on the ABC thing I was like okay no, mm. no obviously they never you never had. There's no Prince Adam in this movie, because you Which, would know because there would be photos of him as Prince Adam. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I've got to say, I'm quite glad the whole Prince Adam thing isn't in it because they'd spend so much time setting it up. Man, if they'd, oh, I, I was about to go on a discussion of actually, you know, when we we're doing a new He-Man movie, but this goes back. This wonderful line of dialogue. Let's go. I don't think so. No. <laughs> um, on Bravo TV, they they showed He-Man the movie in in the mid nineties. And they, they even knew it was a bit crap. So they advertised it by saying, <laughs> because coming up on Saturday evening or 8, 8.30, whatever, he, uh, Masters of the Universe with, contains some fantastic dialogue. And he goes, <laughs> and he goes Just go. what all the kids want. Yes. Oh, I, thought, oh, I couldn't stop laughing. I wish I kept that tape. Huh. <gasps> I've got to say, in HD, his nose is less convincing. Yeah. Still great makeup, though. I a lovely character design of the whole weird semi wizard, semi futuristic yeah, thing that's I mean, going on. Yeah, just think because there is, and this was at the time a difficult thing to do by translating a cartoon into a, a live action movie. It's you know, but I suppose it's still the same process as tr- as doing a comic book film. Mm. You know, like Superman at the time that that was anything that was successful. Um, so, but, and you have to, but nowadays when they do it, they still modernise things, don't they? they? They change things around a little bit. So, because you mm. can't have He-Man running around the majority of the time completely butt naked with a few pieces of armour on. <laughs> yes. It does, At least um, give him a cape. It does yeah. ultimately do that, but they just give him a cape and sort of, uh, 
I think wasn't the design. I think it was by Mobius who designed He Man for the for the movie. And I William didn't Stout know that. Went oh above it, changed some of it. Yeah, that's interesting. My yeah. goodness, really. It's, uh, Gary God, I've got some interesting designers on board to sort of visualise the movie. As you were saying about the sort of cosmic, Marvel cosmic stuff mm. that plays into this movie. That you, yes, the yeah. New Gods specifically, yeah. yeah. This is far more of a New Gods film than it is a Masters of the Universe film, really. This is closer to Tyson Infinity uh, War. As then. I believe Goddard has actually um, admitted. I love the design of the troopers as well. I, was, I wanted them as action figures. Yeah. So good. I mean, it's clearly a stormtrooper mixed with an imperial gunner, but yeah. I mean, yeah. But a hint of horde trooper, maybe. I don't know. Horde trooper. They were horde axe troopers from He Man and She Ra. Oh right. Yeah. Yes, yes, because they, yeah, they definitely look more like something from the She Ra world, don't they? Yeah. Or in f- really, this has more of a link in with the second He Man series, which was more of a Star Wars ripoff. Oh, the new He-Man, Adventures of He Man. That's it. Couldn't remember I, the title. Everyone hated that. I, I quite liked it as a kid. I, I never saw it. I was getting too old by that it, stage. So I, yeah, I was, I was the right age because they played it, it. It premiered during the summer in I think nineteen ninety or ninety one or something like that, and I I was obsessed with it. And I got the new figures and stuff and the sword, but it, and I just kind of. I think they, sh- they probably only showed half a season back then. Then that was it. It was all you got on the UK TV. Yeah. But I thought it was all right. And then later on, everyone sort of hated it. Then they kind of, then it's people sort of went back to it. And so all the stories are actually quite good. I think most people were annoyed with the new design. Yeah. And they wanted the fantasy thing and less of the sci-fi thing, etc. Yeah. But the toys were great. The figures are like, you know, proper work put into them. Because yeah. famously, the original Master of the Universe figures reuse so many parts, it's terrifying. <laughs> But, um, you know, these later ones, they actually put a lot of work into the features and bits, but people just don't have the love for them. No, they don't, no. There's some lovely sort of camera work in this. He's sort of, it's, sort of quite, it's quite theatrical, isn't it? Well, it sort of yeah. it mirrors his performance, isn't it? There's an interesting oh. thing where the photography later on, I remember listening to the, the commentary by the director, he'd said um, he wasn't really happy with how the film was looking. Where you see... Um, the, especially on Earth, when you go inside the guy's apartment and the microwave explodes, oh, very yes. flat, bland yeah. photography. Then he's, he said to the DP, "Look, you got to start throwing in more colours." So then you start seeing greens and purples get thrown in. Where uh, Courtney Cox is getting chased by Blade and Beastman through that kind of uh, that sort of warehouse bit or outside, yes, yep. which is full on, looks proper eighties. It's like full on. It's got neon signs, everything. You know, you think you think she just ran into like a Michael Jackson music video. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she married uh, Scott Bakula. My goodness. What a great, what a great son that is, Bakula. Yeah, that people, is. people often could call him Dracula, wouldn't they? It's dangerously close to Blackula as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <It's> just, <laughs> you know, yeah, is that true. something anybody wants to remember? <laughs> <laughs> well, she was, she was going to be uh, interviewed for my documentary because we sort of needed more thought female talking heads. Um, but I think she'd, I think her, her schedule at the time sort of conflicted with our shooting in, in oh, LA. Oh, that would have been interesting. Yeah, sort of get her perspective on things. But this was the f- one of the early scenes they shot for the film, so the director said it was quite stressful because you've got you've got a, an actor wearing this prosthetic thing, then mm. you've got a, a moment where he's kind of like drowning, you know, and you've got this animatronic thing as well with his ears and water coming out. So yeah, for the first day shoot, it's a bit of a nightmare. And poor old Lundgren's apparently just been given the direction of sit there and look slightly confused. Oh god, it does yeah. If, if you if you it's a bit early on when they're inside. Um, Gwildor's house. Dolph looks really confused. He's like eyes all over the place. When he when he when he when he walking walks into the music store and goes, I, I believe you've got something that belongs to us, which is the cosmic key. Mm. And then it cuts to Dolph, and he just looks a bit baffled, you know. <laughs> but he was going to be dubbed. He had he had to really yeah in his contract he had he could try three times to get it right, uh, and the third time he got it acceptable, but. Gary Goddard hired a, a guy to dub him over and he got it perfect. He sounded great, really good voice, it would fit He Man. Um, but then because they'd paid for Dolph, they're going to have his voice as well. Yeah. And Cannon said, kind of vetoed it at the last minute, I believe. But I think, yeah, basically, Dolph got it to an acceptable level. It's, it, that would have been a similar case to Flash Gordon, where Sam Jones was dubbed over. Um, so that was never his real voice. Flash I Gordon. did not know that. No, it's not his voice dubbed over. Bloody um, hell, they did a good job. Yeah, yeah, very good job. Um, Usually you can tell, or there's a f- couple of little giveaways, aren't there? But. Yeah. What happened in Superman the movie where um, the actor who plays a teenager, Clark Kent, Jeff East, he was dubbed over by Chris Reeve. So he, Jeff East had a deeper voice, so he dubbed him over. So oh. it matched, matched quite well, actually. Um, 
Yeah. But I, th- I think it's probably a good thing for, for Dolph's career that he wasn't dubbed for this movie because it often kind of buggers up people's careers when they're dubbed over. Yeah, understandably. Um, it's like a publicly it's seen to only do half a job almost. Yeah, it? yeah. Well, better talk to the cow. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I've got to say, Barty does a good job of getting a few emotions through in the eyes, considering the whole yeah. top of the head is entirely rigid. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, the same with Jan- Lan- Frank Langella. He's he's probably having to be so animated underneath that yes. prosthetic to get that At least his moves, through. you know, he's got yeah. something going on with Barty's one. It's literally rigid. Right, all together now, nobody told her life was going to be this way. <laughs> her job's a joke. She's broke. <laughs> Etc. She's got real guns as yeah. well. Oh, what the arcade machines? That's Ms. <laughs> Pac-Man. That's in, yeah, Ms. Pac-Man on the left. Oh, I can't tell the one on the I, right. Might be Gallagher or something. I don't know. I no, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Yeah, all I saw was Miss Pac-Man. Yeah. This is eighty. This would have been shot in eighty six. Yeah. So yeah. I think what else would have been out. So this is odd because it's almost like this is a different film because not only is it obviously on Earth and it's more mundane, blah, 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 but we're now getting a long character introduction. We've had no introduction of any of the other characters. Literally, no. they just turn up and say who they are. It's, it's, okay, I was going back and forth on this idea that, um, like, how it starts, where we've got, um, we're thrown straight into the film. Mm. So it's, it's kind of implying the filmmakers know the kids watching... They've been watching He-Man cartoons all the time, so they know where, who, who He-Man is, who Skeletor is. So we're just going to kind of jump straight into it like it's, like it's a new episode of He-Man. That's an interesting so point, it's, it's, yeah. It's already implied that Skeletor has taken over, finally taken over Greyskull. Um, so that's, that's my kind of thinking. And then the new characters, as we see here, are actually introduced. Yes, I think you're spot on with that. Even though the characters are noticeably different from the cartoon, all you need to know is He-Man's the good guy, Skeletor's the bad guy. Yeah. And because, I think that's quite clear. But I think for the entire show of... Of He Man, I mean, it was just the same premise, wasn't it? Every week, where like He Man Skeletor would come in to take over Skeletor, uh, Sk- 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 uh, Grey Skull, and uh, and then you obviously defeat him, and it just repeats itself. Isn't it, it? Yeah, but there's a little bit. This it goes weird places. A lot of it was written by J. Michael Straczynski, who went on to do um, well Captain Power with Goddard, but also. Um, uh, Babylon 5 and stuff. And they actually got some interesting little ideas and plot lines in it. Mm. The problem was very limited by the animation because the animation budget was stunningly low. Recycled, wasn't it? Yeah. A bit. And the same five actors doing all the voices, you know. <laughs> it does leave this weird disparity in the film between your sort of your space action and when they're on Earth, like the storytelling's different as well as the look and feel. It, it's like it's like it's um it didn't really think about selling this, well, making the story accept, uh, uh, yeah, I suppose acceptable for moviegoers who weren't familiar with He-Man. It didn't mm. be given that easy introduction because all it gives you is beginning with just this kind of little voiceover saying about yes, you know, Master yeah. Universe, or whatever, and Grayscale. Um, but I mean, it's it's a it's it gets away with it. I mean, yeah, oh the, yeah, I mean, it's part. it's certainly not so confusing or anything like that, but. No. Um, just has that sort of slight incongruousness or incongruity, which is the word I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's nicking some chicken, the little swine. Guarantee that shot would be a nightmare to do. Oh God, <laughs> film it backwards. That's what it sounds. <laughs> oh, somebody had to clean that mask afterwards. Know, Come on, he, Billy. He Come on. Didn't get in his mouth, did he? Yeah. I meant to mention this earlier, but this is always found it odd that the boyfriend's van from the outside is a van, but the inside it looks like a hearse. Does it? Yeah. It's a, I don't know why that is, just the way it's I'm lit or shot or something. But. Yeah, because they've, they've got some like pop songs in it. It's like Living in a Box. Yes. In the background. Yeah. I was going to say, trying to think of the name of the band, but it was literally Living in a Box, box. by Living in a Box. <laughs> yeah. What should we call this song? I haven't got an idea. <laughs> this is where we find out everyone on Eternia is vegetarian. Yeah. Except Man at Arms, who is a cannibal. <laughs> That's not canon. I've just literally made that up. Um... <laughs> I love the little moment here because Man at Arms is like, okay, we've got to go now. And he's like, Gwildor? He's like, I'm going, I'm going. Because, yes. <laughs> like, yeah, even in watching this, I think Man at Arms never uses his sword. Why has he got that? I, mean, I bet the actor was That's like... That's a really good point, actually. Yeah. My back. It's driving me nuts. Can I just take it off? You know? Yeah. No, it's established now. Yeah. Yeah. The sword's and got a backstory. Shot, it's staying. Yeah, we shot know. the early scenes first, so... yeah. And now the dead parents for some reason. This is also a weird relationship they have. 
because mm-hmm. he knows she's leaving him that day, that night, and they still act like they're in a relationship. See, I, this made, yeah, this is really, really odd. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, I'm leaving away and we're all leaving, but apparently we're not, and he wants her to go to his band rehearsal, despite the fact he has no other band members. Um, yeah, the film has no extras. Just, in it. Yeah, there's literally <laughs> it's just no Even supporting artists. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of a weird. They've got a very strange relationship, but it's kind of and maybe maybe they thought like okay, she's not. She maybe he's he obviously thinks that she won't leave, but she's a mind set up. But as soon as she finds this cosmic key, her whole life changes. Also, because I shot this, I think like early afternoon, because obviously doing the shoot number of takes, it begins to get darker, so they have to put these lights on. Uh, to keep the uh, to keep everything lit because as soon as they turn now and walk away from yes the, they are suddenly lit yeah, yes it comes on. Uh, and there we are there we go. It's an, again this is an odd one when you're reading through the script you're like so this is a kids film but they find the cosmic key in a graveyard near both her parents graves because they're all dead <laughs> is this just because you didn't want to have to cast the parents you know yeah. well, well the, the mother it. does kind of oh yes the, of course the dad, they do because they the appear dad, at the end the dad is yes. a stunt coordinator now holy shit back to the future and he's skateboarding he grabs a bloke's card hang on and but turns around he's like hey that's the same ah. guy the stunt coordinator guy. right yeah. in my head they're the same film now yeah <laughs> same universe yeah. shared universe folks He's got he's got his own portable Howard Jones shoved in there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a space Howard Jones. <laughs> Let me out. What is love? Oh. That's great. That's a great shot. Yeah, yeah. The whole film's just full of great turns. And also because also uh, Courtney Cox was in Friends, and that lady plays her mother in Friends as well. So he plays uh, oh. uh, the sorceress. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. The Friends connection. Bloody hell. See, that's the prototype. So yes. Maybe that will... I'll be worried, worried about that going wrong. It's a prototype. It was that sort of time cop effect when you all come out all twisted or something. I don't know. Th- this is a good point. He never. He has the opportunity to swap it for the fully functional one, but never does. I don't know. There's a difference between them. That's what's yeah. not implied, is it? Perhaps, yeah. He, the prototype works. I'm going to stick with it. Yeah, it's got... Is this got, a you know, an older firmware update? <laughs> you know? It's not compatible with oh, this one's no longer supported. Yeah, if you, if you call them up for support, they're like, "Oh no, mate." Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I think this, the band, the Illusions, this was the director's band in when he was a teenager. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> listen to this. Listen to this. I am the only band member. I must play all these instruments simultaneously. Help me. <laughs> so, what do you think? It sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going now. Bye. And it's actually this moment here when um, uh, the Eternians, the villains, sort of come through the, the time, well, the, the warp, whatever it is, the, the tunnel, um, and attack. The music's quite ominous as well. It's quite scary, mm. kind of haunting music. And then, and the villains all look like they've escaped from an early 80s post-apocalyptic film. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, it's come out of the, uh, what was that sort of uh, Fred Decker movie? Um, Monster Squad. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And then the bloke comes out and goes, you kids aren't supposed to be in here. And he gets just thrown through the door. He? <laughs> yeah, and he gets his face really mashed I, up, yeah, if I remember. They, yeah. they cut really quickly, yeah. but he's all fucked up. You know? yeah. Look at that. Lovely uh, space that, that is so Star Wars, isn't it? Oh, my God. Look at that background set. And that's Varys from Game of Thrones making a little uh, cameo appearance there. <laughs> not actually. It's not so much. This is wonderful Google Earth they've got here, isn't it? Yeah. Show me. Ah, here we are. This is amazing that Skeletor has access to Google Earth so early. Like, that's literally a satellite image. I know, this is quite funny because they've, they've, he's obviously lit them in dark so you'd actually see them, but because of the, of the transfer of the Blu-ray, they've, they've adjusted the contrast or brightness a bit too much. So you can kind of see them. It's <laughs> yes. Like, why try and hide them? We've got a uh, roided up Richard O'Brien. And, it's, uh, yeah. With... <laughs> the Predator. I love, I love how with, little, with injectors little, on his face. Yeah, the little... Oh, we've got... Fleabag Man. Yeah. Um, Moss Man. <laughs> Moss Man, yeah. He really and stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, that was Stinkor. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Moss Man was, was perfumed yeah. as well. Yep, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Was yeah. perfumed. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> ah, I think that's the advert. The kids yeah. go, Yeah. <laughs> he smells of grass. <laughs> and then Stinkor sm- was um, covered in patchouli oil. Oh, really? To make him smell. Some people's dads at school wore patchouli oil because they're old hippies, so it's like, literally, stink or smells like your dad. 
I should have put him in sulfur or something. Yeah. Sort of rotten eggs. Oh, God. God, it's stuck the house out. <laughs> God. Have you farted again? It's yes. my toy. It's moss, man. <laughs> Fuck off. You know. Yeah, good old Charlie. He's always keen on intergalactic objects we found in graveyards. <laughs> It's like one of those retro gaming dealer shops, isn't it? You go in there. It's like, what is this? Ah, oh, I know what it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Only released in Japan. 300 quid. <laughs> he released in Japan for two weeks. So, again, I'm not entirely impressed by their around the world fantasy get up. It's just some cardboard and fairy lights, really. It's a bit shit, isn't it? Yeah. He went, he went to be in Star Trek, didn't he? I think. Was it Deep Space Nine or I something? I recognise his face and yeah. I can't place it. He's got lots short, he's got lot short hair. He got rid of the sort of curly mop. Um, Mind you, I suppose this school probably doesn't have much money because it only has two pupils. <laughs> and it catches fire. Yeah. So. <laughs> that doesn't help either. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's a wonderful uh, score, uh, cue musical piece here by Bill Conte where they sort of now come through the, 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 the tunnel. So if I made this film, I'd have wanted her to have pictures of Skeletor and that with no explanation <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Like a sexy skeleton reclining or something. It would have confused everyone, yeah. especially Mark Commode. Yeah. <laughs> what was that a bit all about? Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no, he's all they're doing is literally jumping like a meter. Karg's not posing like the others. He's no. like, no, he's all business, Karg. <laughs> when you've got hair that requires that much work in the morning, you don't have the time to mess around. It's like a Tina Turner, isn't it? I mean, why on. new characters? There are so many it's fucking characters in He Man. It's a sell new toy, Stuart. <sighs> but you couldn't even it. buy them of most of them. You couldn't buy no, a car. No, you couldn't buy a car, no. Yeah. Till now. Yes. Yeah. Let's mess up this person who's possibly a janitor, but he's dressed like a pupil. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he'd <laughs> be, be cool dead. Kid, he man. would be very dead. The guy, Blade, uh, the actor, is also another. I think there's a lot of stunt work as well. So he trained Dolph. I'm probably Frank Langella with some of the sword battles. Ah. Because um, he, he has to run with two swords by your waist, which must be an absolute nightmare to do because of the weight of them. Yeah, if they're even up, prop, you know. vaguely properly weighted, which they must be because, yeah. you know, he's moving them. I've only just realised Karg has an ermine cloak. It's a little bit self-important, isn't he? Yeah, it's a little bit. But this bit always terrifies me because he comes around the corner and goes, he goes, hello, pretty, and he goes <laughs> towards her. It's like, fucking hell. A lot of Pepsi there for a bit of the old product placement. Oh, yeah. Can't beat Superman 2 with its um, Marlboro red cigarettes See, Oh, everywhere. my God, yeah. Smoke, people, God damn it! <laughs> it's like they hadn't even read the nicotine cartoons. <laughs> In Superman 3, they have camel cigarettes and put tar in kryptonite to make him evil, which is great. <laughs> I've totally evil. forgotten that. That's how, you, that's how you make Superman evil. You don't have kryptonite, you don't Oof. have krypton stuff, you put tar in it. Ammonia in the eyes. That's probably him dealt with for a while. God. Oh, poor Beast Man. Ah, that's right. One of Beast Man's traits is he repairs eye damage from ammonia very quickly. <laughs> Guarantee the actor yeah. in that Beast Man outfit's probably just fainted half the time mm. wearing all that. It looks like they were actually on set with that yeah, incredibly they, dangerous raging fire. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Exactly. Bonus points for that. I think when they blow up the car later, they sh they blow up most of the windows and down the street. Because it's a blast. Now, this bit here, this is full on 80s. Like, oh, yeah. You've got, you've got a smoke machine going, you've got the reds, you've got the greens, colours, and you've got a neon sign just saying pizza. And a cheap warehouse full of empty cardboard boxes. Brilliant. This is, this is like the Beat It music video. Haha, -ha, a fence is no match for me. <laughs> did you play the Spectrum game for this or the Commodore? Um, I one? did back in the day. I really enjoyed it on a Commodore. I played the Spectrum version. I can remember it not at all, which no, is not a good it's, sign. It's, it's, it, has a, it has a map on it where you kind of have to find the notes for the key. Oh, yes. You had to literally run around picking up the notes. The, the notes were... The map was terrible. You couldn't even figure it out. It's such a it's such a chore. But as a kid, you know, you have the time to do that shit, sort of shit. Um, yeah, I had the theme from the film. I may have um, streamed it recently. I remember it being pretty bad, actually. But I may have been had like the worst version or something. The best version, apparently, graphically wise, is the Atari ST one, which I can't get to work properly. So there was an ST version. Yeah, oh, I don't it's think only I sixteen bit one. So I want to try and get to work and do a let's play, then then regret it afterwards. <laughs> It looks like Courtney Cox has caught He Man sweaty disease. <laughs> it's got it's dengue, it's dengue fever or something. <laughs> Here, take this thing because you trust me now for some reason. It's a Tando Zapper. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to have one of them. That'd be great. This way. 
why am I wearing this thing on my chin? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, some good old it is, it's quite cool because it's hiding. quite because you've got robots. You can uh, you can full on attack them by sort of oh, carving yes. them up, and all the sparks come out like Power Rangers. Yeah, I mean Which we I presume cool. they're robots because of the sparks, etc. Because yeah. you never see them take a hat off. No, no. I suppose they're not like the stormtroopers would have like conversations about like I don't know <laughs> what, yeah. what what sort of guns oh, on site. It's another drill and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't. This bit's always a bit confusing. Like, does it bounce off his? You must have missed him. Oh, okay, I thought he might kind of like. Bounced off something. No, but even worse shots than the stormtroopers from Star Wars. Oh god, yeah. Oh, oh, lizard man, no. Because apparently, like Canon, obviously, were going through financial difficulties when this film came out. Now, a lot of mm. people said Superman Four had a budget of thirty-four million, which was cut in half, and they said it was to pay for this. But Canon had spread themselves so thinly; they had like eighty movies on it on in production at the time. Like, Whoa, year eighty-six to eighty-seven, they had so many films. Probably less, a little bit less than that. But most studios were putting out 10 a year. Canon were putting out 30 to 40. Um, but what happened was Mattel pretty much paid for most of this. It was kind of later revealed. Because like, oh. Mattel said, oh, we put up the first 10 million. You got to pay the rest. And we're like, they were like, no way. So Mattel needed this to be successful because when he went into production, He-Man was successful. Six months in, He-Man toys had bombed. There's a Ooh. massive drop in sales. Because people, the kids have moved on. They were onto Ninja, onto Ninja Turtles at that yeah, point. Yeah. He Man was no longer a thing because they had a had a what a five year lifespan. That's pretty good for toys. It's, yeah, especially you in know. the eighties, things tend to come and go pretty quickly. You had three waves, way. didn't you? you had, uh, you had like the first season of toys, second thing, and then the third one was kind of like I don't know, sort of they're getting a bit desperate, weren't they? With the uh, design, had a huge number of figures, huge, and so many mm. reused parts, as we said earlier, so they could yeah. knock them out quick. You know, got to say in that fight. It was all carried by the Blade character there. All Lungan he, really did was hold his sword up a bit and got one spinny move near the end. Yeah, and stole his sword. Here's my sword. Yeah. And then, um, but the weird thing is, you see Evil Lin with that sort of device which kind of repeats what they were doing. Yes, some sort and of time scope. And you see He-Man, scope. He-Man's like, oh, yeah. sword. Like, this is awesome. I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, why didn't we see this earlier? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You see him throw the sword, but all you see is a close-up being just going like yeah. this, and you see it hit the wall, you know. Hey, I wear a leather hat indoors. There's an extra. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I was trying. To, I was like trying to spot all the other bands in the background. Like it's always shit. You just don't even recall who they were. There was quite a lot of Grundig, yeah, like, stuff in the background. Grundig. I mean, they were crap, mate, weren't they? I can't remember. We had a crappy TV by Grundig. Grundig yeah, I mean, they were sort of competent. I, I <laughs> think <laughs> is is the best you could go for Grundig. Yeah. Probably owned by some. Uh, East Asian manufacturer these days. Yeah, yeah. All got swallowed up, don't they? Mm. Oh, that's a good synth oh. sound. Orchestra hit. Go on. Because it was weird, didn't it? Because um, I think this, I think this uses a the traditional sort of Yamaha DX. I think it's DX7. I think mm. it is. Mm. A lot of the, you know, uh, bands or singers at the time doing 80s synth stuff. You know, were using. I think part of that chip went into the Mega Drive, didn't it? The Yamaha chip from these oh, keyboards. Oh, that's it's like confusing a strong, as hell, like a, yes. It's like a small, like a, a cheaper version, maybe. Mm. That's why you, when you listen to Mega Drive music, it often sounds like 80s pop music. It's the same. Yeah. You know, same and, and they inside. never, well, hopefully that will change this year, but whenever they do remade Mega Drive hardware, it never sounds right because they never they don't, get the chip no. sorted properly. Well, even like the Mega Drive 2 didn't sound the same as the Mega Drive 1. I don't 1. believe it did, no. Well, it's, it's odd to think. Like, same with the Commodore 64 when they sort of changed the SID chips in them and depending on what Commodore you've got, the music sounds different. Oh, oh. God. My God. It's like a now, TV. that is a radio. <laughs> it's like a phone. Oh, I'm assuming that's empty by the way he picked that up really easily with one yeah, hand. <laughs> yeah, because that would have been well, that would have weighed a ton back then. Julie's in the burning school again. <laughs> See, He-Man's cape comes in handy because it becomes a oh, cape yeah. for other people to wear. Oh, to show how kind he is. I think I think Dolph said he's, you know he, he felt a bit embarrassed doing this because he sort of was a bit weird. Like there's a he said there's a dwarf with a key and running around <laughs> naked. Just, you know, it, was, it, was, it was a bit weird, but I think it was. For, you know, uh, obviously, a big challenge for him because he had done Rocky, where he was the villain. We had bugger all yeah. lines as well. All we had to do was look like a meathead, and this yeah. big. It was, it was just, I must giant break enormous. you. He was trying enormous in that film. Yeah. And then come this, he's the hero and the lead, and he's got to you know show a lot more 
emotions as well. But he's still kind of emotionless throughout this, really. I mean, there's only a couple yeah. of bits where he loses temper. Um, no, it's, it's pretty flat. And to be fair, he's not given a whole lot to do either. No, so. I think that, that was that was obviously clear that he couldn't, he wouldn't be able to hold most of these scenes. So Frank Langella's oh, got all the dialogue. Yeah. Um, and I think Frank Langella also changed some of it during the process, um, obviously for the better, I think, for him. Mm. Um, it's amazing how Lundgren's come on over the years now because, you know, he's a bit of a treat in a film these days. Oh, yeah. I mean, he could... I think come... If you, have you seen the film I Come in Peace or Dark Angel with Dolph Lundgren? No, no, I haven't. That's a really good uh, sort of action sci-fi film we did in 1990. He plays a cop. And he, I think it was that phase where he dyed his hair black. He oh, the yes. Punisher, he yeah, he yeah. That. He, he just kind of looks quite cool with black hair, actually. It kind of suits him. Uh, but his acting had, had clearly had, had improved. And then come Universal Soldier, where he's playing a villain again. He's really charismatic and kind of outdoes Van Damme, I think, really, in that. But... Uh, it, Dolph had this weird career where he didn't, he didn't really take off on a theatrical level. Um, I think Johnny Mnemonic was the last film he did that was on a theatrical Holy crap. thing in 95 till The Expendables, um, which was 15 years later, I think. Bloody hell. I mean, he made the classic Kindergarten Cop 2, obviously. But, God, um... I was so gutted by that because I thought it would be really bad, good, you know what I mean? But it was just, it's, just bad. Yeah, it's just really. dull, isn't it? Um, so the Back to the Future thing's holding up with Strickland here. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, I'm so disappointed he doesn't call anyone a slacker in this I, film. Oh, God, yeah. Because he's basically the same character. He really is, yeah. <laughs> he's the character from Back to the Future 2, isn't yeah. he? Yes. Yeah, we meet yeah. him with a shotgun. <laughs> like a slacker to me. Um, he's also in Top Gun as well, playing another shouty yeah. man. And yes. So he was the go-to 80s shouty man. He was. So this is, the, this is the moment I mentioned to Stuart earlier, where she, Tila kind of like a bit jealous. Yeah, yeah, she really she looks at her, you know. Mm. It's like, oh, she's a bit. Oh, it's a bit of a cat yeah. fight going on there. But there's no other than that. There's no love interest stuff in the no, film at all. Not no. at all. They can't have that in a kids' film. Yeah, didn't you know? Didn't shoehorn it in, which is good. No. So Gwildor has now stolen himself a pink Corvette. That, if I recall, he somehow converted to run on neutrinos or something. What is neutrino? Aren't neutrinos the things from turtles? Those kids that come for that. Double dimension. <laughs> oh, no, yes. you know. He's minced them up and stuck <laughs> him in the catalogue. Runs on yeah. children. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he got all the parts to do this. No, and why you just put it, put petrol in it? I just, oh, I don't know. Neutrino. Ah, oh, this is a old gobbledygook. Flux goke, capacitor. Yeah, there we go. And it would have been more entertaining if they all went and got the bus. Oh, that'd be amazing. It was Sophic Four moments. Yeah, you know. Well, there's going to have lots of footage of a Cadillac being played back at one and a half or double speed now. <laughs> so there is obviously a clear relationship between Skeletor and Evil Lynn, where yes. she's she's putting up with his shenanigans, or he's just like he's such an ugly bugger. But I can get I get the power from him because she she's, she seeks power as well, doesn't she? That's the oh, whole yeah. the whole ploy, wasn't it? The cartoon that she was yeah she, he she, couldn't really trust her. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of Destro Cobra Commander thing going on almost. Yeah. In this, I wonder if she has the hots for Skeletor in some bizarre way. Yeah, it's just this kind of twisted relationship they have, isn't it? It's like yeah. a beautiful, it sounds like an abusive one. Um, well, because at the end, where she, you know, she clearly sees Skeletor's losing, she goes signal to retreat. She's just like, "Fuck this, I'm out of here." So yeah, you know, literally, she, right? Fuck yeah. this, guys. We got to be back in the sequel. Come on. Yeah. Ah, uh, Korg's got his back coming sorted. Look at that. Look That's at that. astonishing. He's more hair than he's more hair now than man. <laughs> <laughs> more hair than Gremlin. <laughs> Because I think he was uh, another sort of uh, character actor. I think he popped up in... I think he was in Star Trek as well, actually. Oh. I think he's the guy with the Star Trek Deep Space Nine with the big ears and the sort of... Uh, oh, the Ferengi. Yeah, I think it's him. Think Armin, it's like, Armin Shimmerman? I think that's him. No! I think so. so he was the... Um, in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, he was the headmaster, wasn't he? Or principal. Oh, yeah. Or one of them, at least. Yeah. That was the bit they spoiled in the trailer, isn't it? Major yes. spoilers. God, back then, God, you everyone would have fun hissy fit. I'm, I've got the sweaty disease from He Man as well. It's, it's not helping. <laughs> he Man flu. And so Skeletor can instantly vaporize people with one shot. I'll bet he doesn't use that again. It never does because it's, a, it's an effect. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Get a right. <laughs> Yeah, because they said uh, Stallone appeared on set 
uh, to see how Dolph was getting on. And he sort of looked up and saw, and he, he said to William Stout, I think the production designer said, you gave that guy lines. <laughs> Cause see, he knew he, at the time, he you know, obviously clearly knew that Dolph could, mm. didn't have the acting chops maybe. Um, I wish Langella had done more villains like this. Oh, God, yeah. He said it's his favourite role okay. of all time. And he's played Nixon. He's played yeah. the guy with dementia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who had a robot friend. That was a great film. The Robot and Frank. Yeah, yeah superb so good, film. Such a good film. Yeah. Um, Dracula, you know, which I, still, which I still need to see, the 78 version of Dracula. I didn't realise that was him. My yeah. God. Yeah, it's got I don't know anything about that film, It's really. by John Williams. Weird thing is, right, they shot that film, and it's all got a glorious t- Technicolor look to it. And the director desaturized, or saturized it, or no, was it desaturized? Took all the colour out of it. Desaturated, yeah. Desaturated it all, took the colour out of it, and made it look really, like, grey and miserable. And that was that's how it's looked for the last 20 years. And Aww. you can't get, if you want the original, how it looked, you've got to find an old pan and scan tape or laser disc. Bloody hell. Yeah, he ruined his own film, <laughs> you know. What a strange thing. But Langella was also, he's Perry White, isn't he, in Superman Returns? Yes, that's yeah. true, yeah. Quite, he's, he's quite a good Perry White, a bit more... Yeah, yeah, he's a bit shouting sometimes, but he's a bit more kind of a relaxed father figure, I think, in that film. Um, yeah, Langella's brilliant, isn't he? Yeah, he, he just totally gets it. You've got to go over the top. Go big or go home. So this is the part where the photography is like, if you, it's cut into there, it's got a bit nice bit of colour, but this is all just flat as a pancake. It really it's is. dull. Yeah. Uh, makes it look super cheap. And it's odd, because that looks like a film cut to him and he's in a TV show. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it really is, yeah. The weird thing is, like, the director said he didn't, Canon films used to get their 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 films printed at one place all the entire time. They always lied on one uh, one company, and it always their results weren't particularly good compared to say I don't know like a, a Technicolor or whatever or f- mm. uh, another, another another laboratory. So they so he went somewhere else for, for He Man, and it actually looks like slightly trying. He's basically trying to stop it looking like a Canon movie. Uh, by going to a different <laughs> company to print it. It's weird, you know. It's Technicolor have been the industry leader for God knows how long, haven't they? Still, I mean, they did Infinity War, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they also do my films. Oh, really? Yes, I don't know why they keep working with us. <laughs> I, I presume the director, like, kidnapped their pets or something. <laughs> so their, their role within that is to sort of what? To, to, uh, is it colour correction grading they're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. grading, and uh, they'll probably be doing our VFX, I think, but... So what do you think it is? He never says. It's a device that makes music when you push keys. Why would he think it's anything else? I've never understood that. <laughs> also, that's straight out of fucking Return of the Jedi, that thing, isn't it? But Come also, on. Is, is that a toy in the He-Man cartoon? I'm sure it looks very similar. Mm, they've got similar things, but not a sort of dark and obviously Star Warsy. Yeah. This is a bit I like. Oh, you, this is amazing. You see Superman, blah, 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 Superman blah, 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 He-Man blah, 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 blah. throw that sword. That's that, and then he just goes, "Eh, yeah, <laughs> this, yeah. Why didn't we see that?" Ah, <laughs> uh, one of the weaknesses of this device is it makes the past look cooler. <laughs> oh, God, oh it, you done it's, goofed, card! This wonderful device that destroys microwaves. From a oh distance. yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Ten metrons. I love what he, I love what this throws all these kind of weird words in, but you just kind of accept it. Yeah. All their time yeah. units that makes are sense. sort of uh, fictional. Sense. Yeah. You know. I've just realised you can really obviously see the lower jaw of that guy in the armour yeah, talking, was... which makes me think less roboty. Yeah. So he mm. man's actually killing lots of people. Yeah. The um. Well, that's another thing. Mattel had these weird rules where he man couldn't attack or kill anyone. And they were like, the director was like, this is going to be impossible to shoot interesting action scenes where He-Man can't actually do yeah. any damage. And then as soon as the toys start failing, they were like, do anything! Uh, Let him kill, main destroy! Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anything you know, that looks cool, for yeah, God's sake. It's kind of a little bit too late at that point. Could um, you imagine putting knockoff KFC in a microwave? That's going to be bad. It's going to oh, be soggy you, and... And you can... You don't want to give yourself food poison, are you? No, I don't know. Probably not. That's all he lives off. God, he must have blocked his toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was unfortunately the main plot of the sequel, which is why it was never made. Yeah. <laughs> oh, because yeah, no, you, you asked me, hadn't you, before we started recording about the sequel that was supposed to come out. Yes. Because um, Canon Films also kept hold of the license for a little bit longer to make more He-Man movies, even though this one was going to bomb. They wanted to sort of keep making, sort of basically taking advantage of the He-Man 
uh, license. So they said, oh, we're going to do He-Man Master Universe Part 2. And they put out this uh, press photo or image saying, you know, Master Universe Part 2. You can even see ones for Superman 5 and like Spider-Man. Um, and this was going to be uh, Albert Pyun, who directed Captain America film. Mm-hmm. Um, he was going to make Spider-Man and, and He-Man 2. But then, obviously, they lost the license of both of these. So they said, well, why don't, instead of like scrapping what we'd prepared for He-Man 2, like the costumes and some of the sets, we repurposed them for another film. And that eventually became Cyborg, mm. which Albert Pyun wrote a script over a weekend. Oh! You can kind of tell. <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot of fans of Cyborg. I think it's one of Van Damme's kind of weaker movies. Um, it's got some interesting stuff in it. I like the post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic stuff. And that was kind of... That was the cheap way, wasn't it? Because Roger Corman did those of Mad Max ripoffs. Yeah, absolutely. And if you do just have that, there's a scrap metal everywhere. It's the future. And then Burger he- King, everyone, just in case you missed it. <laughs> we don't know why he's got it because he gets the free chicken and ribs from his girlfriend's place. That's but not anyway, a bin, mate. That's a fucking sink. You know? There's a point. <laughs> Fuck, he's terrible at cleaning up. He's dumpable, oh definitely. That's why she's dumping him. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's purely because he. Pause all the Burger King in the sink. <laughs> Deary me. Sorry, you were saying about uh, Cyborg. Yeah, so... Um, yes, and Cyborg was put together. It's, it's Cyborg did very well, actually, financially, for Canon. I mean, it cost like a million or under, and it made like a million bot- domestically. Um, because it was all on the heels of the success of Bloodsport, which did pretty well for Canon. Despite Menachem Golan thinking Van Damme was poison, and he was terrible, he was shit, and, and Bloodsport yeah. came out, and it was successful. Yeah. And suddenly everyone wanted the Van Damme films. Yeah. And then, yeah, because Canon had a three-picture deal with Van Damme. So it was Bloodsport, Cyborg. I don't know what the other film the other film was. I think he'd gone out of the contract. Because the contract. Ah. there was Kickboxer, but that was distributed by Canon in some territories, but it wasn't financed by them. Mm. Um, yes, I mean, he, like, He-Man 2 would have been... They got that, Dolph obviously wasn't going to return. They had this guy who was like a surfer. It looked like He-Man, spot on. Oh. He-Man. But um, I don't know, you know, uh, if um, he would have been any good or not. Um, but yeah, Frank Jedi wouldn't have been Skeletor either. Oh, no. So it would Lost been, interest, it no. Would, it would have been awful. It wasn't it been... the plot that Skeletor had basically come back to Earth and destroyed everything? Yeah, yeah. And he ran, he ran his corporation or something. You know? Oh, God. <laughs> Skelecorp. <laughs> Skelecorp, yeah. It's basically the become Rupert Murdoch, doesn't it? So he's got the collar on that um, Rutger Hall wears in the Wedlock. So what was that film called? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's basically he's he's a prisoner and somebody else has one of these collars as well. If they get too far away from each other, the collars explode and kill them. It's a bit like Running Man. Yeah. yeah. It's the same principle. It's the, it's the collar of shame. I th- yes. I think it was called Wedlock. I sound like a robot with my collar on. <laughs> She gets all the cool gadgets. It's like it's a massive gadget to, to display one item. So you could have had a photo. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Look, he's got a photo. Look, he's he's ahead of the curve. Yeah. <laughs> I did my job properly for once. Yeah. I did good. I did good. Can I have a new Afro comb? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they've all got a. Sit- it's a weird thing, weird spaceship, doesn't it? Because we mentioned earlier, it sort of looks like looks like something from Star Wars. Yeah. But when it takes off, everyone's actually got to stand still. Oh, you'd God, be so yeah. like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> guys, whoa. holding on to everyone. <laughs> also, again, no extras. Nobody sees this thing. That's Nobody. a weird frame rate, wasn't it? That was yeah, yeah, like stock weird. footage or something. Yeah. yeah. There's no extras again. Nobody notices this. At least have someone walking a dog and yeah. then they sort of look up and see it. I don't know. Something like but that. Do you know, I was then going to say at least there's a car driving past, but no, it's the then Cadillac. It's, yeah. Yep. Team Ian. And the neutrinos. Yeah. <laughs> it looks Which, like the car as well, isn't it? But it's purple. I think in the Turtles, in the He-Man, no, Turtles cartoon or toy, whatever it was. I think, I Splint, I think Shred- it was Shredder's vehicle, wasn't it? Oh, I can't remember. I don't remember that. I, I have to go back and watch some retro blasting or something to sort of figure it out. <laughs> it's all clear over here. I, as I look in the corner of the room. Because they all ran in and just literally had to stop, like when a frame of the camera finished. Like, <laughs> yeah. not here. <laughs> it's like, it's like oh, you moved too far. Back to ones, everyone. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's weird how that collar has a name like a mystical artifact when it's just a piece of technology. Like the collar of, I can't remember, they just said Erebon or something. But yeah. There we are. Yeah, it's like, it, yeah, it's like a, 
it was owned by someone else, like another wizard or something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I think it's that sort of fantasy element because it was this was written by David O'Dell, who had written the script to Dark Crystal. It had oh. come from Jim Henson's company, but then he wrote Supergirl in '84, which was a massive bomb. Mm. And Cannon obviously thought, oh, you know, he wrote a successful movie, I believe. Yeah. Let's, he let's, wrote a movie, let's, certainly. Let's, 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 let's make him do He Man. I think actually, well, this is a better script than Supergirl, far better. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Nowhere's near as good as Dark Crystal. But Dark Crystal itself has a, it's kind of a simple tale as well. It's not very deep or anything like that. It's just got this kind of great sort of battle between the Skeksis and the. I can't remember the other All the Gelflings. Gelflings, yeah. Um, and it's all, you know, wonderful production design. Mm. But this is, um, this is as, was, as I mentioned earlier, it's kind of a weird kind of. Uh, take on the on the cartoon really where it's sort of throwing us straight into essentially what it could be like a new episode yet everything is sort of this so different, different feeling yeah it's, it's yeah. an odd one isn't it because earth exists in the he-man mythos eternia is like another planet miles off yeah because he-man's mum the queen is originally from earth if i remember i think he-man's supposed to be from earth isn't yeah. it no I, th- I think he-man is I think he's like the mother was from Earth, but the father is Wasn't King Randor was a, of Eternia. There was supposed to be either it was in the comic book adaptation of this, or it was a scene they'd wanted to shoot but didn't. In the Catacombs of Grey Skull, they find um, the American flag. Oh, and um, people had visited Eternia years ago by somehow. Oh fuck knows, but um, or like someone had gone through a similar dimensional thing like this but yeah mm. sort of connect Eternia to, to Earth. Earth yeah as opposed yeah. to the sort of very oh we've randomly gone here That'd yeah I mean that I mean then maybe they will uh, deploy that idea in the new film when they do it with an this is that watch this right you go Dolph's gonna walk in he's gonna talk to um, Strickland or, Strickland yeah <laughs> I can't remember his real name no. I apologise I think it's Tolkien something actually um, like, no, look, keep a look on Dolph well, when he's cuts to a close up um He has to... Of course, he's blinking a lot, isn't he? Yeah, a lot Crikey. Blinking, But you see, he man's about to dart off in a second. Um, but he just looks a bit confused. What right now? Where is it? Cuts to close. Look, he just looks oh a, my God, he's he just, looking everywhere, bless he, him. He just yeah. looks a bit confused, yeah. <laughs> Mustn't forget my lines. <laughs> Grildor, damn! I got it wrong. <laughs> <gasps> Not 0.61 chromons. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> have you seen the Electric Boogaloo Canon documentary? I have. It's so yes. good. Oh, Love it. Fantastic. They said they, you know, the, I think, that, yeah, William Stout, the production guy, gets interviewed for it. And he goes, a Canon could just like, taste the money when when seeing the rushes <laughs> of this they're like they w- so want this to be successful and it, in the trailer it says like they say it's the star wars of the 80s where mm. star wars is kind of still a thing in the 80s well it's up until 83 t- then yeah. it kind of all fizzled out and like you can't have cheap stuff shot on earth and say it's star wars yeah exactly just because you've got a skiff you know <laughs> that bit. how do you feel mm. <laughs> well, time for a bit of action. We've had a lot of dialogue with just an exploding microwave to break it up, which I presume is why they wrote that in, just to sort of give it, wake the audience up a bit, you know, give it a bit of energy. But it seems, it seems so overly complicated what is designed to sort of create the put the keys, the, the notes into the yeah. I mean, it obviously makes sense to him and his weird melting face. But um. did Courtney Cox? This was her first feature film. She popped up in the uh, Bruce Springsteen music video, which he, he pulls he pulls her up on stage. And she oh, dances with him. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the obviously people saw that. And went, oh my god, look at her! And let's put her in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and surprisingly, she, yeah, she does does a pretty good job. You know, she's yeah she's, again she throws act. herself into it. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I kind of missed the days when Courtney Cox looked healthy, like. A bit more meat on her. Now so she's, you know, she became yeah. skeletal at one point, I think. Uh, you know, sort of, God. a lot of these actors and friends all had up and down weights, didn't they? Like their body weight, because they obviously all, all became raging alcoholics or just sort of drug addicts and sort of had to get out of it. A bit like Matthew, what's his name? Post Chandler. Oh. You know, he had a topsy turvy weight. Yes, problem, he did, didn't, didn't he? he? Yeah. 
What happened to David Schwimmer? He's still doing so. He, he must have gone into he, production or he, directing. They all yeah, do, he went into they? directing. Yeah. yeah. He, to be honest, they don't even need. They don't need to work because they made so much money from Friends, and it repeats so all the time. You know, don't have to. They just hit one of the um, troopers there with yeah. a, like a laser blast. The shoulder. He didn't even flinch. Didn't even flinch. But most of the time, when they get shot, it's, they fly across the room and the bits. It's fall like off. they've. I think the, the FX guys have added a rotoscope yeah. to blast and oh shit, he didn't actually get hurt then. You know, it's like I was like watching these films where they've got laser guns. You see when the actors, how good the FX guys were putting the uh, effect in. Yes. So when they pull the trigger. Hang on, is that a World War II German grenade? It looked like it, didn't it? Hang on. <laughs> this, this is putting a dark edge on the whole <laughs> He Man and Eternia thing, isn't it? <laughs> Blimey. Um, well, fair enough. And I think uh, Man at Arms has got a kind of like a shotgun laser laser says, gun yeah. in a minute. So you saw like a laser blast hit that keyboard and did did nothing, you know. Yeah. Getting over ambitious with the laser blasts. Well, he was a good one. He had a cape. <laughs> <laughs> Royal Guards. I don't know. I'm very confused. <laughs> it's 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 interesting how um, the teenagers or Courtney Cox and the other chap they're they're basically completely accepted. Yes, these people have come from another dimension, another another planet, another universe, and uh, they're not going to listen to the the cop who can basically just arrest them yeah. and for obstruction. The, because when they've buggered off, they you know they're not going to give a toss about <laughs> their lot. Sure. Well, no, that's true actually. Well, they do say you, you can kind of stay on Eternia, which you probably do for about a week, then get really bored because it's really weird there, and like everyone's dead, as far as I can tell. <laughs> and like Skeletor's gone, but what about the infrastructure? What about his uh, troopers? What are they doing? Yeah, is there any sort of jobs you get paid here? Oh. I, don't, I don't know. I can't just stand around this you know grey skull all day. I get really piss bored. So yeah, it'd be good as a holiday. Put it that yes, way. Put it that it's way. a nice place to visit, but you wouldn't want to live there. <laughs> oh, he's got the sweaty disease now. Okay. Oh, so is he. <laughs> Fuck me, it's a sweaty film, isn't it? <laughs> Just to break my cosmic key, <laughs> I'll teach him. That's uh, Courtney Cox is like a character super gullible now. Yeah, this is uh, crazy, uh, isn't it? Yeah, mum's like, oh, we need the key. We've been doing special work or something secret work. Yeah. I think, wait a minute, mum. Didn't you work at like a greengrocer's or something? Why are you doing sort of special work? Why are well, you dressed like the only photo I have of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she's not creepy at all. Yeah. I love, I do love that moment, though, where she grabs her and she goes, thank you, darling. And oh, just goes yes. The sound effect. You know. was Meg Foster all along. <laughs> That music as well. That's yeah. very Disney. With sort of you like thought that had given her the clue, yeah. really. <laughs> music, listen music. to your soundtrack. Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure her, the woman who plays her mother here must. I'm sure she's in something else. I've seen. And we've decided to catch up on you at exactly this moment. Yeah. And not like at home or something. <laughs> no. Not even letter or phone call. Uh. Now, where do you think the crunch point of this movie is where it kind of it begins to sag? Do you think it's this kind of section, the battle in the music store, or do you think it's kind of a little bit earlier where... Um, the, I think you've got a multi-sag scenario. Um, I, th I think it's kind of with the, the cop and him in, at the house, sort of, you know, just yeah. figuring out what the key does. Again, the, the the hits by the um, microwave explodes, give it a little bit of energy. But then there's a lot of talky stuff later in this, isn't there? Wait a minute. Quildor's going to kill us all. Because <laughs> he calls them Autumns. Something like, yeah, it's like, I think it's Autumns or something. Autumns, something like that. But I think that's what it, their word for sort of juvenile kids or whatever. Uh. <laughs> well, at first I was looking at the window. Yoink. <laughs> oh, this is kind of a weird thing where she's also used a spell to, sh to lock the door. Oh, yes. A little ah, bit damn, of a green thing. Damn, it's neon lighting. <laughs> My neon locking spell <laughs> once again <laughs> saves the day. 
So he man needs a broad sword, doesn't he? Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Broad sword. Oh no! That's a good delivery of a scream. I think that's good. Yeah. It's a proper horror horror film thing, isn't it? My mother was dead all along, and they've nicked the cosmic key. This and is a bright. Okay, now when He Man um, and Man at Arms, I come out of the of the, of the store, run out the back, and they go, and they see the troops, and they they fire at them, but they just literally just kneel down, like they don't hide behind anything. <laughs> they just kneel down, We're making your profile smaller. Yes. They, they just say, they, he just says duck, yeah. but there's nothing to duck behind, <laughs> unless you're gonna use someone as a human shield. <laughs> This <laughs> use Gwildor. It's like proper like Total Recall. He's on the escalator. He's like, guys, a human shield. So, oh god! Blow the bits. Now that would be quite a good scene to see. To see, so, look, you can see that she just, just ducked. Yes, that did nothing, he man. Wait, well, obviously they survived, so it did something. Quickly, <laughs> jump over some fire. Poor, poor, poor oh, Gwildor. your Billy Barty's in trouble here. But no, they film it. My <laughs> God, two angles as well. You'd think he'd have worked out to get his gun earlier, really. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now he's getting his Back to the Future 2 shotgun. <laughs> My grung big amps. But on the plus side, there's a dead alien warrior person. I could sell uh, that. Yeah. If he's a robot, you could probably make a synth out of the parts or something. <laughs> yeah. I, love I think that's bit. the last we see of him, isn't it? It is, yeah, of the uh, music man. Yeah. Charlie. He's actually Charlie Brown as he's older. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you know, I always thought that was the Cadillac they blew up. Then inexplicably it's all right later. But no, oh. it's a car next to the Cadillac. Yeah. Uh, Shit. I think so, mate. Well, no, we can't get a That's PG. His name's James Tolkien. Ah. Yeah. There's a lot of transport readying at the moment. <laughs> How do they ready it? Just climb on it and it all wobbles, apparently. <laughs> oh, she's like, oh, that's a good tune. <laughs> oh, oh like, that was a good bump. Write that one down for later. Yeah. yeah. And number three in the Italian charts, it's Eva Lynn. And... <laughs> it's Grildor at number three. <laughs> I thought I was, I thought I'd gone back in time the other week because I told the pops two was on and he sort of had the charts. I was like, "Look who's on the block? I'm back on the charts again. What the hell? What's going on? Oh, thank fuck! It's, it's 1989, not now." Oh god, time to get even more Star Warsy. Yeah, with Skeletor's stunningly jab at the hut-like vehicle. <laughs> it is, isn't it? And the, the, okay, no, that's this, weird. That's the Green the, Goblin the stuff. Yeah. yeah, this is very Back to the Future 2. Their costumes are straight out of G.I. Joe. Oh, they are, yeah, yeah. Did, did Mattel own G.I. Joe? Was that Kenner? Hasbro. That's Hasbro. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, um, see, now, the sequence coming up where you have He-Man on those hoverboards and stuff. And I, think they, I think they managed to pull it off, sort of, to a, you know, for its budget and... Uh, Visualize it okay, but because they've got literally no extras, it sort of bec- it it oft- it makes it kind of often redundant actually because they've put all this effort in to make it work on camera, but you've got no one, you've got these empty streets. So, yeah. and they just had cutaways. You, you could even shot like the crew just reacting to things. Nobody lives in this city. Yeah, it's weird. It's bizarre. And apparently, like three months later, a lot of this was all destroyed with an er- in an earthquake. Oh, it doesn't exist. Like the bit where on top of the building and Skeletor comes up behind them. Oh yeah, uh, um, that was all destroyed. Bloody hell! Yeah, so if they were filming at that time, bloody hell, it'd been a nightmare. It would have been terrifying. <laughs> they could have died. God, Skeletor should, you know, should he shouldn't act surprised, mm. you know, because Sea Man's been escaping him for years. Yes, you know, he's, that's kind of his uh, modus operandi. Isn't yeah, it? he's like, for fuck's sake. It's interesting how Skeletor has this giant tank design, but then just sits on top of it with no protection whatsoever. I know. Although they do kind of cover that because he has a magic shield. You oh, see that's later, right. But, yeah, yeah. But you'd think he'd take that into account when designing it. Oh, good shot! Ten points here, man. Yay! Get an achievement for that. Where's the little duck, uh, dog from Duck Hunt popping up? <laughs> There's a moment here when He-Man runs into. He's, he's leading them all inside this building. 
you see his sword fall off off his back. Oh, didn't notice that. Yeah, in a second, like what he the, <laughs> the great the falling <laughs> hate falls on him. So watch his sword. It it will kind of as he runs in, it falls off. See what I think? Oh yes. Yeah. Well, he's a ton because it's also it's how it connects to his back. It's kind of a weird little and um, it's properly weighted so he can you yeah, know yeah. use yeah. it in these stunt sequences. <laughs> It's <laughs> 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 like Stallone in this, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit, isn't it? Because <laughs> Dolph actually becomes Ooh. a lot more articulate with his English in his later movies, you know, because mm. I think it's Americanized his accent a little bit, you know. Yeah. Wee. I don't know how you control those things. That we, oh, oh. God, yeah. I think it might have fallen off that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Stick to the close shots, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ruins his hair. <laughs> they should have had more extras and less bloody troopers because they got a million of those. Yeah, it's cradling it's like, that cosmic key like it's a baby. It's weird. It, yeah, my girlfriend pointed that out. I thought it was very strange. It's, a, it's quite a good shot when he he manages to, to grab it off her, and it's kind of uh, how it's kind of framed and stuching kind of works. <laughs> Yeah, he sells that. You've got to try and hide the, the big crane underneath him, you know. <laughs> what am I doing with my hands? What? <laughs> it's missing the baby. Odd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is that that thing, yeah, that is that looks like something out of visionaries. <gasps> oh my god, there is a vehicle very similar to that in visionaries. Yes. yes. Night of the magical light. I love that cartoon. Oh. I started watching it again about two months ago, I was like the intro is amazing. It's got some good yeah. humour in it, but it is mostly a little waffle. But I, I just wish they did more of it because I, I think they did a, I think they prepared like a line of toys for season two or second oh. wave. Yeah, I remember the toys being happened. really nicely articulated and slightly bigger than the standard Star Wars GI Joe stuff. Yeah, but it was too expensive to make, wasn't it? Because of the holograms. Uh, that's why. That and supernaturals. That's a good shot. I like that. <laughs> Don't know how He Man managed to stay upside down on that thing, but fair enough. <laughs> His hair should have just gone like that. <laughs> like gone <laughs> vertical. <laughs> What's going on, Gwildor? How's your egg timer? <laughs> oh, it's, it's quite a good shot, isn't it? How they directed it, where you've got Skeletor literally coming up slowly behind them. Yeah. They're completely unaware, but the audience are aware, which is quite, it's quite a good thing. Turns out my skiff can go up as well as across. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, he's actually got, got the snake things on his um, ship. Like, uh, like we, we lose to Snake Mountain. Well, they mentioned yeah. Snake Mountain. Yes. Yeah, you never see it. Oh, if you though. saw it, you know, you, yeah. you, you wanted you to see that. I assumed from when I'd seen bits of this film earlier for seeing the whole thing that that was Snake Mountain Skeletor was in. Because he kind of acts like it's his base and that. But yeah, yeah, he's no, it's, literally just taken it over. Yeah. Oh, he's like, oh, the gun. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay. What about this sword that I never use? Don't bother. You never use it. <laughs> loose change. <laughs> <laughs> Taking his trousers off. <laughs> yeah. trousers off. No, that's, that's too much. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> See, if this was a modern film, you'd have had to have sit through 15 minutes of um, how Skeletor came to be or whatever. Oh, God. And we voiced over by um, uh, Morgan Freeman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's true that you'd have had too much faffing around establishing and not enough yeah. being evil. Well, that's that's the economy of script writing. I think that's sometimes that's a skill they have. Some people writers haven't actually learned mm. sort of cut through a lot of the fat. To yeah, sort of make it as we were things. saying, you know, all that matters is He Man's good, Skeletor's bad, and we're going. Yes, Mind you, they didn't build up Courtney Cox, etc. Mm. But you know, see if I made a he- made a He Man movie, what are you gonna do if you cast the actor to play He Man, shoot for the first six months as his Prince Adam. Right, where he's thin, oh, and yeah. then stop for three months, get him to buff up, and then when he does the eye of the power moment, it's just when you do those shots, have them identical locked off cameras, oh. and you create that sort of transition where he gets bigger. Yeah, that would be mind blowing, that would be really cool. Oh no, an electric leg. <laughs> <laughs> this gives her a massive zit on her leg, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, it does, pop doesn't that. it? Fucking hell. Oh, it's a small grunting from Dolph. 
That was well, a quality swing, grunt, that one. He swings the sword at, at the camera, which is quite funny. A lot of hoos and haas. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, yeah. <laughs> but, mm. Kabla! This is, a, I think, the only time you sort of show off how strong He Man is. Well, I think later on he pushes over a massive statue, but he sort yes, of throws them is, all off him. That is the big strength moment. Oh, he's, what was, I don't know what he's going for there. I don't know, Pissed yeah. off, I laughing. Think he's quite enjoying that, actually. Yeah. This is the first, I think it was the first night of shooting for Frank Langellis. This is the first time he's actually playing Skeletor in the film. Oh. Yeah, it's completely obviously shot out of. Not shot in continuity. You know. yeah, well, yeah. Most films aren't. Absolutely. Know. I think one of the famous ones that, that shot it all from start to beginning was uh, E.T. Good God. That's how you get the, the kids to react so well and oh. get, get the emotions out of them when they all start crying when E.T.'s dying. It's an expensive way of filmmaking. It's like, oh, we're at this location four times, but we have to go back to it four times yeah, <laughs> as opposed yeah. to shooting it all together. This is one of my favourite things with how happy Blade is to get that sword. Oh, yeah. Like, you really believe that swords are his thing. You know? Oh, of course. I'll be pretty chuffed to buy that sword, to be honest. Mm. Oh, yeah, he picks it up. Yeah, like... And every he just looks so pleased with it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> look! <laughs> look, Skeletor got a sword! <laughs> got a sword, Skeletor! Well, he says, uh, leave them here to rot. You know, you think, well... They can breathe the air. They can eat human food. They're yeah. fine. All they've got to do is go get, go get a job. Yeah. Go on the dole. I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, time to go down again. That's just, I think that's an earlier shot, isn't it? Just, I think it is. Just wind it. Yeah. See a bird flying backwards in the background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shooting star goes, what? what <laughs> you certainly won't see the extras walking backward because there bloody aren't any. <laughs> Oh, she's got a serious version of the sweaty disease now. <laughs> well, it's blown up, but magically it's half fixed later, and then I fix it all better. Spoilers. <laughs> well, so yeah, when when this came out for you, um, you, you saw the trailers and stuff, right? Was it just like yes, the poster? Yeah. Or we something? did see the trailers and the poster. Yeah, and just no interest whatsoever. Just wasn't what you wanted from He Man. Bizarre, cause my my friend my friend Brad who pops up on the channel now and again to do some commentaries. He's a filmmaker, but he is uh, roughly the same age as you actually. And he'd he saw it at the cinema and he absolutely loved it. And he he had one great story where the old days where you had to when you wanted to rent a film, you sometimes had to run up the video store and get him to hold it for you. Oh yes, and yeah. Because he this was just this test this this test came out on video, so that it goes oh I only hold it for a couple of hours. So Brad had to break down the <laughs> shop to get Masters of the Universe, and had like eight <laughs> copies all gone, apart from one. Oh you know, my god! Yeah, so excited! I still got the big box tape of this of He Man, the rental one, I think. This um, is really good medical advice. If you have got some sort of wound on your leg, especially if it's open, get a filthy rag and rub it on it. <laughs> That really he helps. Man sweaty cape. Especially if it already looks infected. <laughs> <laughs> or indeed farcically infected. My God. Just want to go all dry so you can pick at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. It's like in the summer when I was a kid, I'd get burnt. And my sister's like, oh, let's pick that one. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Satisfying. She's got a serious case of Gwildor leg now. She's not looking like him. <laughs> Suffering from Gwildor. <laughs> Don't Google that. Yep. <laughs> no, for the love of God. <laughs> See, yeah, Billy Barter does a very good performance through all that. I think he's, you know, despite the sort of the, the, the ludicrous and silly nature of the film, I think because he's done so many fantasy movies, it was all second nature to him. And um, he sort of... He sort I of think that's what, well, how they can get away with a lot of this, because the cast commit, don't they? If there's do, any of them looking too embarrassed or confused other than Lundgren, you know. <laughs> or Teela's a bit, maybe. But um, yeah. it's that that sells it. If you're going to act, always go all in. Not necessarily Nicolas Cage all in, because that's insane. That's, but, yeah, uh, don't go up to 11. Yeah. I think Cage goes, goes up to 12. Yeah, he, really? he has a special it's Cage special, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It kind of looks like the same streets that are in um, Gremlins. Yes. Like you know, but it's obviously not. It's a completely different set, I think. 
But that was all the same because Gremlins and another film had the same. Oh, Back to the Future. These are the same set. Ah, yeah. So they're both, you know. Well, the I think Cog may be a Gremlin, and we've got many Back to the Future things in it already. So. Yeah. Ooh, I always remember tunes, so that I'm useful in the plot. <laughs> Well, he's a professional musician. Well, maybe. I mean, he doesn't seem to... Ha- the rest of his band doesn't seem to you actually physically the exist. The but maybe they all got shot. Though maybe they all just died out back. Mm-hmm. They just got caught on fire. I was going to say, are there more Eternian characters on Earth in this film than there are human characters? Ooh. Oh, God, I've just noticed... Oh, look, look at Billy Barty's mouth there. Yeah, you can see yeah. his real mouth inside. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit creepy. Have you seen that creepy Ninja Turtles yeah. one? Yeah, God, that's that amazing. Is, I also oh. I, was, I saw it on, on videotape as a kid. I thought that is weird. What is that? <laughs> it's like a little. <laughs> He's face. eating a man. He's, someone's <laughs> trapped inside, going help me. <laughs> and then you see it in HD, you're like fucking hell. It's like, <laughs> it's like something out of Beetlejuice. You know, it's like they sort of they uh, open their mouth. Yes. There's another mouth. Something, you yeah. know, yeah, it was a bit weird. Yeah, because I had the sticker album for this film, and I think I still had it somewhere. And it came with a poster. Inside the poster, there was, you see this, it's got this um, picture of this city, and He-Man's in the middle, he's doing Eye of the Power. But it's a, it's a real person, obviously, it's not a cart, it's not a, a drawing, mm. but he's wearing the He-Man outfit from the cartoon. Oh! Yeah. Pretty so cool. at one stage there was a live action test or something? I, I think so, and they, they'd used that for like a press thing i think when gary goddard came on he's working with mattel i think because he had worked with mattel on some other project never happened before captain power but he had this there's that image of he-man holding a sword was to sort of show to people the buyers or the you know the uh, the people on the board that he-man movie was going to be happening mm-hmm. that, uh, this is pig boy yes pig, this is great i want to know more about him that ugnaught yeah. Just there in one <laughs> shot. That's it. Do you know about that? No? No. I, okay. I know it's credited as Pig Boy. Yeah, Pig Boy, yeah. it, but, Basically, uh, the kid, there was a competition to be in the film. Okay. Uh, so this child had won this chance to be in the film, and they got they forgot about him. They thought, oh, God, we know, we've got to honour this competition. Uh, so at the last minute, they had to create this character called Pig Boy, and the kid was just shoved on it for one second to walk past and obviously holding Skeletor's And his job staff. is he holds Stel- Skeletor's stick while Skeletor goes on missions. Yeah, Amazing. Basically. He's only there for that one shot. Um, and there is a... If you go on YouTube, they did this Comic-Con where Guy Goddard, the guy who plays Blade and Meg Foster, and the kid who played Pig Boy oh. is there to sort of discuss making this film and yeah the kid obviously went when he, he i think he got to preview the movie he got to go along with his family and stuff and sort of say um you know he was in this movie but it was just like a last minute thing to get him in the film um obviously because canon were just running out of money and the schedule was speeding up and they would got to get more shots in the bag and they forgot about pig boy <laughs> well, so pig boy was born yeah pig boy was born yeah Lots of fears, just lots of us. Sorceress, who skin problem? Oh, he's still look at him. He's so chuffed with that. Sword. I love that cartoon. It was done. It was it burnt face man. Yes, David Firth. Yeah, yeah. he did. Uh, had the He Man theme tune throughout. Yes, oh, he's, like, he's like saving people or whatever. Yeah. And uh... yeah, from the maker of Salad Fingers and various other. That's things. right. Yeah, God, I haven't seen him for years. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing now. He was making a feature film called The Meadow Man, but I don't know what happened to that. I think he's got a new Salad Fingers out soon, actually. Oh, nice. He did a few car- number of cartoons for Charlie Brooker, wasn't it? Screen wipe. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I think there's one one episode has like someone goes, "Oh, that's so funny!" Because it's so funny, then start fucking laughing. Then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, did a like feature length edit of a load of his work together called Umbilical World, <laughs> and he, I went to see it. They pre- uh, premiered it in, like a cinema in London, along with something he did called Cream, which oh. if you've not seen, is well worth watching. Oh, cool! You made a really good point earlier. Why didn't they paint the eye sockets on the skeleton mask black? Yeah, yeah, I think that would have worked. It would have. It would have really technical reason. Possibly, it would. It also would have. 
it would have really pushed the idea that his face was a, as a skull. Yes. Um, it's a little bit more. Um, maybe he sort of added some sort of contact lenses as well. Um, but maybe, it, ultimately, it would have been a bit too scary for kids. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's as simple as that. But there's a point there, because some of these movies have, like, did you see Shazam? Yes, I did. Yeah. That had horror elements in it. Yeah. Was I was like, fucking hell. When he, when he throws that bloke out the window... I was like, yep. that was like the real. I was just like, Jesus, the way the way he shot it and stuff. And but Shazam has that wonderful balance of having horror in a kids a film a film that is a kids can see. Mm. It doesn't cross the line for it to be completely inappropriate or just like as an as adults watching it, we're like, oh, that's a bit much, isn't it? But adults back then as well in the eighties would have watched Dark Crystal and gone, that is a bit much for kids. Yeah, but kids fucking creepy. loved it. Yep. So there's a that point where you you have to. You, there's a filmmakers know Jim Henson especially knew how to scare kids to a certain degree where it was acceptable and the kids will be interested because kids love horror but there's a it's crossing that line isn't there yes you, you like don't you, want something that's going to give them nightmares you can't show months. aliens to kids because that yeah. will just get a shit out of them um, but Dark Crystal yeah you know and this as well it's got there's as you were saying there's kind of characters that come from like a monster movie and Skeletor himself is quite intimidating I think uh, it all sort of plays into that sort of the balance of horror for kid, for children. It's a tough thing to, to do, isn't it? It's balancing that tone. Tone is yeah. one of the most difficult things for and filmmakers it, to it's do. It's such an odd choice because the cartoon is all so, you know, all the villains are all crazy monster <clears throat> stuff, whereas here they've gone for the more horror monster stuff. Yeah, yeah. They do have one of the sound effects from the cartoon in this. When uh, we saw where we stole the chicken, it goes, you wob. That sort of sound they always oh. made when they threw something or like, you know, in the cartoon. <laughs> now, someone needs to do like, take all the sound effects on a cartoon and just redub this over <laughs> it'd just be so fucking weird wouldn't it it'd just show you how it just doesn't work you know so he's enjoying seeing He-Man get completely whipped to death yeah that cartoon punched. whip is messing him up yeah <laughs> oh that tickles it's like <laughs> <laughs> what? Digitizers on CFAX. <laughs> <laughs> Press reveal for the answers. <laughs> so, yeah, when you see in HD with the nose piece, it's kind of like. Yeah, it's a pity because the rest of it is great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even, even the mouth kind because of works. Because it kind of hides it? the fact that he has no nose to certainly. Because when you saw Red Skull in Captain America, they actually had to have Hugo Weaving with a green bit on so his yes, nose. Yes, same with Voldemort from uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. Ray Fiennes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay here, you slacker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And put your hat on straight. You're supposed to be a policeman. He <laughs> says he's brought the cast of a police academy with him. <laughs> Skeletal broadcast system. This is another system. flip shot. This was in daytime earlier, but they had that destroyed ship on the left, on the right. Uh, yeah. I don't know why I'm telling you this. This is my blog. He's <laughs> such an ego. Don't forget he? to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. I can't hear a word you're saying, Graham. Take the hat off. <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> and he gets all that lightning come on. It doesn't like stringy cheese when he's, to, <laughs> he's pulling it off. Isn't he? It's, yes. like, it's like they haven't really oh, finished. It's horrible. This, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't like this power of the universe stuff. But it's kind of like they haven't really polished off the lightning as as much as they could have done. I think. But it's, you know, it's, it's like it's cool done in like one take. I think we. Really. I think cuts to like a couple of close ups of him. But you know, he just steals the show. It doesn't he really? You know. It's interesting as well that they don't just stop him before he gets the power. He actually gets the power. So that's oh, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, as you were saying earlier, like, before we started this, we were like, kind of like, there's there's a certain level of enjoyment with this, despite its kind of problems. Mm. There's there's films where we don't have the villain have these kind of mad speeches yeah. where the hero's completely this is beaten a down. a huge problem with Marvel films of weak villains. You know, yeah. that that is something that's through a lot of them. Yeah. Obviously, they really nailed it with uh, Thanos. Is it Thanos? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Thanos yeah absolutely. Um, um, then you've got terrible stuff like Christopher Eccleston's dark elf thing from Thor 2. Is yeah. So unresolved, it's yeah. ludicrous. See, this, is, this is full-on Marvel villain. This is. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And in fact, now turns into a Jack Kirby-inspired design. Yeah. 
massive chandelier on his head. It's, yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. It's weird piping. It's got this weird, like, like bat wings on the so back. It's, yeah. It's, it's all OTT, which, well, is the point, yeah. I suppose. But. Yeah. I suppose, how would you visualise someone who's has the power of the universe? He becomes a god, doesn't he, now? So, yeah. yeah. Not a very good one. I no, mean, no. He he, he, yeah, he's a bit... He just kind of fires out beams of lightning that doesn't really do much. He ends up destroying half his men because he misses. Yeah. You know, aiming's a problem, isn't it? <laughs> it's yes, it yes, villains. Yeah. And laser eyes. So. And that is how Skeletor won RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> but it's also like um, his his face is, has flesh on it now. They just painted it like flesh toned, haven't they? Oh, they should, I've never really noticed. They shouldn't that. have had. They, should, they could have had him Frank Langella's normal face. Then he essentially becomes hu- more human. I don't know. Could have, would, he, yeah. would he have been Skeletor then, though? No, 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 probably not. Why is he playing a chord and it was just notes earlier? I still don't understand that. Oh, yeah, that's a bit confusing. <laughs> that should be an IMDb trivia. To be correct, actually. How come Courtney Cox has woken up? Oh, she's fuzzled asleep now. Oh, no, no, she's awake again. What? Don't hurt my leg, don't push my leg. No. Oh, you can see, it actually got the makeup prop on her leg there. You can see it. Don't ask Dolph these questions. You won't get a good response. That, <laughs> That's really. such a weird line. That's yeah. kind of great. It's comic book writing. The loneliness of evil. How would He-Man know he's never been evil? <laughs> or is he implying he's known he has been? It's, oh, it's a, it is a cutaway yeah. to these stormtroopers just asking those questions. Going, <laughs> <laughs> just, what? <laughs> now this is like a diecast set. It's, you know, yes. it's like you can. There was like 007 ones where you get this like diecast set from a scene from the film by Corgi, and it's so many exactly modern that. Lego sets are just a bit of a wall. Yeah, you know? yeah. Destroy them. <laughs> I really like the fact that they've managed to force their way through time like half the car is. That's there. great. Although yeah. my girlfriend watching this thought that looked cheap and ridiculous. And I was like, oh, really? I quite like that. <laughs> yeah. well, you know. To middle aged men, it's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst god ever, Skeletor. <laughs> if they remade this, you, 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 they'd blatantly cast like Bruce Willis to be this character here. Yes. You know? And, and he's he just bald phone and, it in. He's just bald and grumpy and just phones it in, yeah. And there's a phone there as well, so that would be, you know. <laughs> At least Strickland's putting in some effort. <laughs> Here we go. I was up this in films because, like, a laser gun is uh, suddenly not, no match for a shotgun. <laughs> no. You know. I think he might have just pumped that twice and wasted a shell, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is very reminiscent of Flash Gordon, but without the jokes. That kind of scene. Oh yeah, thing, guys, yeah. It, it needs some more um, Brian Blessed, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> man's alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Buxton does a very good Brian Blessed impression. Very That's good. a skill. That's yeah, a really good. Skill. Peter Safanowitz can do quite a good one. But it's no match. Oh, Peter, yeah, Peter is the man for such things. <laughs> Well, a whole lot of random shooting without any real I mean, this was, story this to was, it. This um, was edited by, I think it was Anne, Anne Coates or Annie Coates, who'd um, one of the best female editors in the business. She'd um, edited Launch of Arabia. Nice. Yeah. And edited He-Man. Hmm. Great. <laughs> wonder which one she had more to work with from. And wonder which one she was going, how do I make this scene work when they've <laughs> shot it weirdly? <laughs> That's quite good they made the curtains move there, actually. Yeah. Attention to detail. Yeah, it's another moment where it shows He-Man strength in it. You just sort of push yeah. over stuff. And also ruining the foundation of the building, maybe. So, yeah, and who is it a statue of? Is it like previous think, rulers? Yeah, these are supposed to be other gods, I suppose. Yeah. In Castle Greyskull. Yeah. The gods of power or something like that? I don't know. Previous you know, masters of the universe. Gods of technology. The god of cosmic keys or keyboards. Oh, yeah. Ainsley Harriet's fan club I don't know something like that <laughs> now this is my favourite moment in the film because he says I have the power yeah and we get a wonderful 65mm effect shot 
She's gorgeous. You are useless. You, you're actually better without your power, Skeletor. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I have some more stringy cheese. So before he was cosmic powered, he could kill with a single lightning bolt. Yeah. I am tone deaf. <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing effects. Now, this is a, like, hey, because the director knew they were going to, Canon were going to shut down the film because they're running out of money, yes, right? Yes. So he faded the lights down when the swords collide and with the, his staff so he can come back later and figure something out. Because once you kind of, because it kind of gives you this kind of fade in, fade out effect. Um, so this is literally the last day of filming I think they had. And then Canon shut them down and they, kind of let them film overnight with a cameraman, DP. Then that's the guy playing Blade. Oh. Uh, in a scatter outfit. So you had to choreograph a scene very quickly um, overnight to, to finish off the movie. But also they still had no other... They, what was it? The bit where Skeletor falls off. They have a fight. Yes. And he, t- he turns back to normal, doesn't he? Yeah. That was done like three months later or maybe six months later at Holy Boss crap. Film. So I had to recreate this set and finish it off. Uh, the movie at, at Gary Goddard's own expense. I, I had heard that. Yeah. yeah. So they basically run out of money and kind of like, no, seriously. Yeah. But they're like, we haven't got the final fight between Skeletor and He-Man. Yeah. They was like, no, it's fine. Roll, roll credits. You yeah. Know, that's how schlocky they were. That's how they just couldn't be bothered. You know, you can't finish a movie like that. Th- this, I've never understood this. So breaking his stick takes away the cosmic power? Yeah, it didn't come from that though. Maybe, yeah. Maybe why, just... why did he put it all in his stick? The yeah. daft bugger. <laughs> Put it in his shoe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't get this off. Get off yeah. my <laughs> I put it in my liver. <laughs> uh, it's one of my other many swords. <laughs> so he's got a power sword as well, I think. Yeah. So part of the original idea for He Man was that the sword of power um, was in two parts. Skeletor right. had half. And He Man had up, but it never became a thing. They I made it for the toy, yeah. but they never actually made it I part think it was of the, in the canon. comics. The early comics had the. Oh, maybe. They put the two together. Maybe. Because it, it never it, happened in the. Um, no. No, because I also thought it was weird. Because I had the He Man toy. And I thought, why is the sword a bit weird? Like, why has it got like a little bit you can put into something else? So, yeah. Yeah, it's literally weird. mix them together. Well, Skeletor's done a Emperor Palpatine. Yes, that's right. I am the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> Victory, nobody's here to listen. <laughs> Why does nobody live in this place? Victory. Yay, good work, guys. <laughs> I love he's all like been cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. He's finally had a wash. He has had a bath. Look at those look at those troops like they're rebels in the background. Look at yeah. those outfits. My That's God. so turn the Jedi. So Lubick is is now dressed as an extra from one of the Sinbad films. Yep. Yeah. He's found himself a Bride half his age. Yeah. Well, it doesn't even play how long they've been there for. If he's, if he's in there for like a couple of days, he's picked someone up very quickly. That, that's almost troubling. Player, you know. Yeah. What, what services is the sorceress providing? I don't understand. Um, yeah, she says, oh, you can remember Eternia with this. Well, with, with this glowing orb. Yeah. Apparently this scene was a bit longer. They cut it down. Um I think when they tested it, it was longer and actually got a lot, actually made people cry. Oh. Quite an emotional moment. And um, Canon were like, no, just cut it, cut it down. It's kind of, <laughs> we're, we're Canon. We want explosions, not feelings. <laughs> <laughs> See, Leave that th- to Orion. See, the thing, he kind of looks away and sort of smiles like the camera's the like, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the action doll. Sorry, sorry. Give them your energy. Come on, help them, help them. <laughs> Come on, Dolph, act. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got quality street wrappers in his hair. <laughs> That's his jubilation uniform. It's like a little child. Toffee sat, pennies. It's sat next to him, just pissed around with his hair and going, I can put this in your hair. That'd be fine. <laughs> Up the doorway, Gildor. Please. It's very rude, isn't he? This bit here as well has Dolph looking a bit more confused. It's just because he doesn't say anything now. I think he says good journey. That's the last mm. line he has. So but, I how they wrote Courtney Cox out due to the illness for a while. And then she's just bang. It's... I mean, it's supposed to give it more of the impetus. Oh, they've got to go and save her as well. But then it kind of they gloss over yeah. it a bit. Oh, yeah, no. maybe that's what was more in this end scene. Who knows? Okay, guys, walk through your giant swirling space toilet and go home. <laughs> it's like sliders, isn't it? Yeah. I don't kiss him. You'll catch something. Uh. What was that, Dolph? <laughs> Man, Teela looks really spaced out in that. 
Oh, I didn't see her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love those troops are like going, oh my God. Yeah. Here we are. So she sort of sent us back before, before my parents died. Because yeah. well, apparently it, it's a time machine as well now. Yeah. And that could have changed the plot considerably, couldn't it? That Go back done. and smash up Skeletor when he's three or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but he always a skeleton in this. I mean, they never sort of elaborate. Skeleton they? baby. I think he was called. Look, she got one of those dinosaur things out of the magazine. You get every week. You get like <gasps> another piece of the dinosaur. <laughs> free with free binder with part two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. First issue's a pound. The next issue's a fiver. It's nice of her grandmother, who is also a clown, to have given her that uh, night dress. Fucking hell, yeah. Who'd wear that? It's always in American films when they shoot these things where people like go to bed wearing full on proper PJs. It's, yes. It's, it's boiling yeah. over there. <laughs> it's like, you know, three pairs of socks. You know, a vest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are the most eighties glasses ever. Oh yeah. We've destroyed the entire timeline for everyone. <laughs> You're probably gonna turn to horrible Cronenberg freaks. <laughs> Don't get on the death plane. <laughs> Don't get on the death plane. I think, yeah, definitely the score makes it work, this scene here. The There's been moment. a lot of that. So, yeah. I mean, the hats off has... to Bill Conti. Yeah. Things like the scene where Gwildor suddenly pulls all the bits together to make the cosmic key, mm. like, that doesn't really work. But with the mm. score, it does. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's top work on it. Yeah, Bill Conti doesn't get used that much anymore. I think it's because he's just, like, can't be bothered. Maybe he's just too old. I was going to say, sick must be industry. pretty old by now, must but, um yeah, this is the only sort of big sci-fi film he did. He did obviously the Karate Kid movies and so, um, yeah. Rocky's up to like he didn't do Rocky Four. Vince Dakota did that. Just re- bring over a lot of his music from Transformers. Well, maybe actually Transformers was after Rocky Four. So we are the only ones who remember. <laughs> and this is a bit. which is like another bit I love because it's like he's doing I Have the Power, but in front of the and he's really skull. tall now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it just looks like a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> the Crimson Permanent Assurance, you know. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, well, I've got to say, isn't this one of the first examples of a proper post credit sequence? Oh, it is. In, Ooh, a, in a comic book yeah. film, certainly. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Because it says, yeah, it says, I'll be back. Yeah. Um <laughs> because you mentioned the Street Fighter of the movie earlier, that has a post credit bit as well. Where it says <gasps> Yes He sees some replay or whatever. Yeah, it says continue. Yeah, it's continue, he that's it. Fist smash yeah. out of the thing. I thought oh, it's another film that kind of follows that sort of similar sort of there structure. Are odd similarities between the films. Yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? So I I do kind of enjoy this film, but only because I'm so into the 80s schlock and I can gloss over the dull stuff. But yeah, same here. objectively, it ain't good, is it? It's got it's, a whole slew of problems. Yeah, really yeah. does. I, it, the problems really lie with script and sort of characterizations and um, the sort of the, the the cheapness of it all kind of yeah. hinders uh, what what they set out to do. Because if you look at, I say, I mentioned earlier with its sort of concept designs, it was it looked amazing how it could have if they brought that all to life and Canon spent a bit more money on it. Um, it would have kind of worked, and it's unfortunate that it, you know, it came at a time when He-Man wasn't it just kind of popularity had just sharply dropped. Yeah. Kids jumped onto Ninja Turtles, and um, and as you as you say, as a kid and as a fan of He-Man, saw the posters and saw the design, think there's nothing like He-Man. But I think that was kids yeah. always want things that look like the things they already like. That Pokemon, you know? isn't it? They got yeah. the Pikachu right in the film, didn't they? Looks, yes. looks exactly the same. Where yeah. you know the unfortunate thing with Sonic, you know, they're now to just hastily change everything. It may end up looking worse. I don't know, but um, I hope so. I hope it just looks like some sort of freak from a really horrible nightmare. horror film. <laughs> yeah. It's fairly close already, to be fair. <laughs> I can't get my head around why they would spend so much on CGI to make it look like somebody in a suit. But there we are. Yeah, bizarre, isn't it? But, you know, these sort of films, you know, you have to take the risk, don't you, and see mm. where things are going to go with the, with making that leap from a, a, a cartoon to an action figure to uh, a movie, a live-action movie, and for it to be taken seriously by adults and and for the kids to still be invested mm. in it. I think, as a kid, I, I kind of, I really enjoyed it, but I was fully aware of the kind of the sort of the middle middling issues of it. The, the, the middle act is kind of problematic, mm. I think, where you sort of, sort of tune out. And yeah, then, having uh, never seen it as a child, I don't know if yeah. I would have enjoyed it or not. Yeah. 
I think there's enough explosions and cool skeletors. That yeah. must have been good, yeah. surely. Yeah. And it's sort of the, the music and sort of, you know, seeing these explosions sort of make up for it. And um, I think the, the best stuff is all on in Eternia, with all, on that set. Yeah. Which is the only kind of big set where the money is. And it's kind of, they spend all their time there. I mean, um, it's so obvious they've had to cut every corner going, but they... They've done a good job with what they had, I suppose. I mean, the lack of extras really is what makes it feel the cheapest. Yeah, the action's very clunky. I think. Yeah, I don't think Gary Goddard was particularly good at shooting that. But I think they. I think. I don't think they had a second unit. I think he had to cover it all himself. Oh God, so it was a bit of a nightmare. So when yeah, He Man's first introduction, which is quite good, where he's standing there seeing that speech by Skeletor. It's a good reveal of He-Man. Okay, that's He-Man. Okay. Then you see him doing all his action, which is really clunky and little grunting. Yeah. Think, oh, is, is this what we're in for? <laughs> you know, it certainly grunt is. Face. Yeah. <laughs> Shot with close-ups. <laughs> grunt face. <laughs> yes. That's the subtitle of the film. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It's, um, I mean, I think over the years it's become a bit more appreciated the movie has because people sort of see, oh, it's where they're going with it. This was Because we've seen so many other films kind of follow a similar... Well, sort of fail because they've, they've gone too far with things or um, maybe they've the, the money obviously the money wasn't there but I think we've seen so many failed attempts but I think he's, this one still has a bit of charm to it this yeah. has charm I think that's yes what, that's I think that's what makes these things isn't it and it's mostly given to it by the cast really yeah because they're for literally it. invested in it here we go Skeletor in the bath. Just what we all needed to see. <laughs> I think people were a bit pissed when the Blu-ray came out because he looked green there instead of white. On the DVD he looks white. Oh. Yeah, it's a different colour correction. Maybe that was supposed to how it was supposed to how it was supposed to look, but never mind. Okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. I mean Stuart, we'll probably be back with some more in the coming weeks or month or two. Depends how Stuart is getting on with his movie. I good. think I'll be back. <laughs> I can't avoid eighties films. You we'll know have, this. We'll have, we'll have to. We'll have to think of the next film that to sort of uh, to discuss. But I think there's a long list of movies we can go through. Mm. Lawrence of Arabia, <laughs> <laughs> a Russian art house film from the thirties, which has no English translation. <laughs> Make up as we go along. Yeah. I think Mortal Kombat Annihilation would be quite good fun. Oh my god! Do you know I've never actually watched that. Oh my god! Oh, oh, oh that, I think that could be a good one. I think that would just destroy you, yeah, emotionally and mentally. My god! But that'd be good though. As long crumble. as we can listen to that Mortal Kombat rave theme from the oh. first film. Oh my god, that's so good. I never actually had that appear in a club before. I wish it did. <laughs> I, 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 You've been going to the wrong club. I have indeed. Oh, damn. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the commentary. Take care and goodbye. Goodbye.